Okay, so I am doing a uh, research uh, for my literature class because I have a project and to I have a project on the social impact of a 90s event. And so first thing I always do when I am researching, I go through and I just go on Google <laughs> and I search just exactly what the title of the research assignment is social impact major 90s events that's a better one oops major 90s events let's see oh magic johnson popped up let's see when was that november 1997 oh well <laughs> I have suddenly ended up on Discover, the school's Galileo website. So this should be even better. Better sources. Okay. The 90s. See how many scholarly articles I can locate with just that. The gay 90s, popular music from Victorian musical shows. It's, hmm comedy and television cultures of the 1970s, 80s, and 90s Japan. I think I'm going to stick within the United States for my event. Mm, 90s Club and the Whispering Statue. Yeah, they have a lot of art. 90s Rewind. It's 90s Nostalgia. A Clinton is running for president. And the air stinks of money. Let's see what this is about. Oh. Uh, we can't find the direct source. Hmm. So I guess we can't use this link. Oh, here we go. PDF full text. That's not what I was looking for. So I'm going to go back, go back, and I guess I need to be more specific. I've done a paper this semester on the television culture of the 90s. I've done it on music and the impact of music. It's a lot of rap. What did you want one? OJ Simpson, that took place in the 90s. Let's see how that affected media. Or just court cases, period. I'm actually a pre-law major, so that would be really cool to just research the lawyers on that court case. Hmm. OJ Simpson trial. Where are they now? Simpson's brush with the law didn't deter him from crime. Oh, this is an article. OJ Simpson's case 20 years on, the Heat players, what became of those associated with the OJ Simpson case? Oh, okay, here we go. And we have the lawyers. Oh, Robert Kardashian. Oh, goodness, that's what they're... F All right, that's annoying. <laughs> okay, so, um, let's see. What's some text on this? Nah. Let's open a new tab and go to Google. Get some basic information. Or Yahoo. Google Finder. Um, events that impacted the 90s. Major events. Maybe the 90s is a little too vague. Maybe I should do a specific year. I was born in the 90s. Major events from 
top news stories from 1994. Oh, a Rhonda took place. Article 4 is taking place in history. Oh, goodness, there's so many things. It's specifically like during November. Oh, Reagan comes forth with Alzheimer's disease. He's 83. Astrid from Haitian government and Prime Minister's and full cabinet. Clinton orders Bosnian arms embargo ended. Nick Gingrich named House Speaker. Russians attack Secretary of the Republic of Chechnya. Chechnya. <laughs> All right. I like this. Clint orders Bosnian arms embargo ended. What took place with that? Clinton. And the. Nice. New York Times. Clinton vetoes lifting Bosnia arms embargo. President Clinton used the second veto of his term today to block legislation that would end American participation in the arms embargo against Bosnia. And the White House said it hoped new allied diplomatic and military efforts in the Balkans would draw enough congressional support to sustain the veto. Hmm. Thank you, New York Times. Ah, perfect. It was published just a couple of days after. I could use this as a source, so I'm going to keep this tab open. And I'm going to go back and Google the same thing that I Googled for this link. So I have located my first primary source. Yeah, I think for this presentation I needed uh, several. So, I'm just going to open as many as I c I'm going to look for as many as I can, and then I'll narrow it down when I start actually writing the paper. Um, back to Google. <sighs> Clinton. The effect. Clinton and the Oh, in the Bosnian War. Looks like there's a war. Um no Wikipedia decisions to intervene. How the war in Bosnia ended. Oh, this is from Cato. This is a good one. No, wait. No, no, no. This doesn't look credible at all. Let's see. CIA Gov? Uh, PDF? Alright. Let's see what the government has released to the general public. should be pretty helpful. And I get to directly cite the CIA in my paper. View the document collection. Bosnian intelligence and Clinton intervention. So usually, oops, oh, usually when I locate a source, I don't really read through it in depthly. Just like go through and and depth depthly, but I usually just go through and I find key points that the paper or the article covers, and I use that to compile what my key points are going to be in the paper. This way, 
if I find multiple articles and they sh share the same um, key points, I have multiple sources that I can cite within that paragraph. Because I always like to give like multiple examples. I was always taught that when you are writing a paragraph to have the topics um, sentence, which pretty much is dates what you're going to speak on in that paragraph. The next sentence is supposed to have two or three supporting sentences and then to place two or th two examples, never over exceed three if you want to be super in depth about it, you can put three, but um, never over exceed two examples. But make sure that they're like relevant and c from credible s sources. And if it's a really good one, you can cite it multiple times in following paragraphs. So I really like finding sources like that. But um, all right. So far, I have the CIA um document on what took place in Bosnia and how Clinton intervened. I have a New York Times article from the day after President Clinton vetoed the Bosnia arms embargo. And now I'm going to just find just like some general information on what took place so I can get an understanding and so that I can make sure I know the facts. Sometimes articles get it wrong. And I want to make sure that I find the most credible. Um, Clinton in 1995. So what took place during this time? A Clinton timeline, CBS News. All right, so Hillary was a senator. Oh wait, I feel like I'm a little. Okay, here we go. Going back to the presidency. Oh, so 1998 was when the scandal took place. Okay, so good. This is when America still likes Clinton. Hmm. Uh, bomb explosion in Alfred Mora Federal Building in Oklahoma. That's horrible. Oh, this is the year Monica Lewinsky begins her internship. Oh, goodness. I guess they regret that one. Okay, President Clinton sidesteps Congress and uses emergency powers to land two b twenty billion to Mexico to save office bank save shave off bankruptcy. Hmm. Oh, this is the year that the scandal took place, so not a lot of people even Oh, a lot of people aren't going to cover this topic. Darn it. They were too focused on the scandal. I hate that. Alright, I guess I should find a new topic then. Darn. Alright. Well, I don't really want to cover the Monica Lewinsky, Lewinsky scandal. I know a lot of people in class are going to go over it. That will be boring to read. Let's see. Um, events that took place on the birthday. It's always interesting writing about topics that relate to you in like a really big way.
on this day, New York Times. Thank you, New York Times. Okay, so I am doing a uh, research uh, for my literature class because I have a project and to have a project on the social impact of a 90s event. And so first thing I always do when I am researching, I go through and I just go on Google <laughs> and I search just exactly what the title of the research assignment is social impact major 90s events that's a better one oops major 90s events let's see oh magic johnson popped up let's see when was that november 1997 oh well <laughs> I have suddenly ended up on Discover, the school's Galileo website. So this should be even better. Better sources. Okay. The 90s. See how many scholarly articles I can locate with just that. The gay 90s, popular music from Victorian musical shows. It's, hmm comedy and television cultures of the 1970s, 80s, and 90s Japan. I think I'm going to stick within the United States for my event. Mm, 90s Club and the Whispering Statue. Okay, we have a lot of art. 90s Wine. It's 90s Nostalgia. A Clinton is running for president and the air stinks of money. Let's see what this is about. Oh. Uh, we can't find the direct source. Hmm. So I guess we can't use this link. Oh, here we go. PDF full text. That's not what I was looking for. So I'm going to go back, go back, and I guess I need to be more specific. I've done a paper this semester on the television culture of the 90s. I've done it on music and the impact of music. It's a lot of rap. What did you want on? O.J. Simpson, that took place in the 90s. Let's see how that affected media. Or just court cases, period. I'm actually a pre-law major, so that would be really cool to just research the lawyers on that court case. Hmm. OJ Simpson trial. Where are they now? Simpson's brush with the law didn't deter him from crime. Oh, this is an article. Oops, right now. O.J. Simpson's case 20 years on, the Heat players, what became of those associated with the O.J. Simpson case? Oh, okay, here we go. And we have the lawyers. Oh, Robert Kardashian. Oh, goodness, that's what they're... F All right, that's annoying. <laughs> okay, so, um, let's see. What's some text on this? Um, nah. Let's open a new tab and go to Google. Get some basic information. Or Yahoo. Google here. Um, events that impacted the 90s. 
nature things. Maybe the 90s is a little too vague. Maybe I should do a specific year. I was born in the 90s. Major events from 1994. Top news stories from 1994. Oh, Rhonda took place. Four is taking place in history. Oh goodness, there's so many things. Let's specifically look during November. Oh, Reagan comes forth with Alzheimer's disease. He's 83. Astrid from Haitian government and Prime Minister's and full cabinet. Clinton orders Bosnian. Arms embargo ended. Nick Gingrich named House Speaker. Russians attack Secretary of the Republic of Chinia. Chechnya. Chechnya. <laughs> Alright. I like this. Clint orders Bosnian arms embargo ended. What took place with that? Clinton. And the bus. Arms. Embargo. There we go. Nice. New York Times. Clinton vetoes lifting Bosnia arms embargo. President Clinton used the second veto of his term today to block legislation that would end American participation in the arms embargo against Bosnia. And the White House said it hoped new allied diplomatic and military efforts in the Balkans would draw enough congressional support to sustain the veto. Hmm. Thank you, New York Times. Ah, perfect. It was published just a couple of days after. I could use this as a source, so I'm going to keep this tab open, and I'm going to go back and Google the same thing that I Googled for this link. So I have located my first primary source. Yay. I think for this presentation I needed uh, several, so I'm just going to open as many as I c I'm going to look for as many as I can. And then I'll narrow it down when I start actually writing the paper. Um, back to Google. <sighs> Clinton. The effect. Clinton and the Oh, in the Bosnian War. So there's a war. Um no Wikipedia decisions to intervene. How the war in Bosnia ended. Ah, oh, this is a from Kato. This is a good one. No wait. No no no. This doesn't look credible at all. Let's see. CIA Gov? Uh, PDF? Alright. Let's see what the government has released to the general public. It should be pretty helpful. And I get to directly cite the CIA in my paper. View the document collection. Bosnian intelligence and Clinton intervention. So usually, oops, 
fast. Usually when I locate a source, I don't really read through it in depthly. Just like go through and in depth depthly. But I usually just go through and I find key points that the paper or the article covers and I use that to compile what my key points are going to be in the paper. This way, if I find multiple articles and they sh share, share the same um, key points, I have multiple sources that I can cite within that paragraph. Because I always like to give like multiple examples. I was always taught that when you are writing a paragraph to have the topics um, sentence, which pretty much is dates what you're going to speak on in that paragraph. The next sentence is supposed to have two or three supporting sentences and then to place two or th two examples, never over exceed three. If you want to be super in-depth about it, you can put three. But um, never over exceed two examples. But make sure that they're like relevant and from credible sources. And if it's a really good one, you can cite it multiple times in the following paragraphs. So I really like finding sources like that. But um, all right. So far, I have the CIA um document on what took place in Bosnia and how Clinton intervened. I have a New York Times article from the day after President Clinton vetoed the Bosnia arms embargo. And now I'm going to just find just like some general information on what took place so I can get an understanding and so that I can make sure I know the facts. Sometimes articles get it wrong, and I want to make sure that I find the most credible. Um, written in 1995. So what took place during this time? A Clinton timeline, CBS News. All right, so Hillary was a senator. Oh wait, I feel like I'm a little. Okay, here we go. Going back to the presidency. Oh, so 1998 was when the scandal took place. Okay, so good. This is when America still likes Clinton. Hmm. Uh, bomb explosion in Alfred Mora Federal Building in Oklahoma. That's horrible. Oh, this is the year Monica Lewinsky begins her internship. Oh, goodness. I guess they regret that one. Okay, President Clinton sidesteps Congress and uses emergency powers to lend two b 20 billion to Mexico to save office bank save shave off bankruptcy. Hmm. Oh, this is the year that the scandal took place, so not a lot of people even Oh, a lot of people aren't going to cover this topic. Darn it. They were too focused on the scandal. I hate that. Alright, I guess I should find a new topic then. Darn. Alright. Well, I don't really want to cover the Monica Lewinsky, Lewinsky scandal. I know a lot of people in class are going to go over it. That'll be boring to read. Let's see. Um, the 
events that took place on the birthday always interesting writing about topics that relate to you in like a really vague way on this day New York Times thank you New York Times So the first thing I would do if I were writing a paper on spiders for a biology class, I would just go to the internet, any internet browser. And the first thing I would usually do is type in Google. Google is basically the biggest search engine and it's kind of the easiest, it's the fastest too, so this is what I use. So yeah, the first place I look for information is Google because it's um, most of the time it's reliable and it's just faster and kind of easier. I didn't really grow up on um, going to a book for research, just technology kind of made it easier. So. I would go to the search bar and I would type in spiders into the Google search bar. So I began the research process by yeah typing in spiders because that is how you look something up on Google. Uh, I searched the terms spiders because that's the general topic but for example if I were to Google something like are spider like wh like what kind of spiders are venomous and which are not I would basically put which spiders are venomous and which spiders are not or really or not and so let's say I did type that in which spiders are venomous or not and the first link was spider identification chart venomous or dangerous and this is this looks like a good link because it's pretty sim oh something just just kidding okay something just popped up but this link would be pretty good because it's similar to what i typed into the search bar so it is a dot com site. It's a termite dot com slash spider identification. So I click on this and I chose this link because it was pretty much close to my search bar. So I look on the site and it's basically pictures of different spiders and it is it's about like 12 spiders pretty much common spiders you would see and it is divided into the level of venom toxicity so basically in that spot it would tell you if it's venomous or dangerous or something like that and where you would find it and basically what the spider looks like even if you didn't have the picture. So I would save this source because it gave me what I was looking for, like which spiders are dangerous or venomous. So I keep up with the information I locate. Um, since I'm on a website, I would just copy and paste the link and I would email it to myself and then I would probably cite it later you know just this is kind of like quick research so I would just cite it later and then 
I keep up with my sources. Usually I I take notes. I don't exactly go to like Google Docs or Microsoft Word while I'm doing research because things just kind of flow better on paper and pencil. So I would write down notes on what I'm about to research or what I'm researching and so in this case I would maybe pick a few spiders and write on that and I would um, summarize what I'm seeing and, and I wouldn't pa uh, paraphrase it because this is what the what the website is showing me it's pretty um, it's pretty summarized already and you know you don't want to plagiarize so um, I'm changing my search terms to so I guess for example maybe that website didn't give me enough information I would go to um, I would go back to Google into my search bar and I would Google black widow spider um, venomous and so I typed in black widow spider venomous and the first link was a link from the National Geographic and it has an article on the black widow spider it gives me the scientific name which is actually really helpful because if you're writing it writing a paper for a biology class that's pretty important and it gives you some pictures basically a lot of background and like statistics on the actual spider so probably when you you know narrow down your research you would go to another website and so this website was pretty helpful so I would copy and paste the link and I would just go back inside it later and so the information I find from this website I would just write down on a notepad or something like that so I wouldn't lose it and the next place I look for information is probably um, for this topic I would probably go to a magazine there's probably like a magazine or a book in the library at Club Hendy or something because I'm pretty sure they have lots of books on spiders and animals like that and I think that's it doing a, a writing a paper on China for my public speaking class um, I usually open a word document first um, because I like to that's where I like to start my writing and I'll go to um, open Chrome for to do my research um, first I'll Google um, what there is to do in China um, because there's probably a lot of more information um, you know, I usually don't use Wikipedia because I just don't think it's a good source um, here's Let's see, Chinese holidays. Um, I like to highlight what I think is important because later then I'll go back and and you know reword it and cite it um, later. But um. Then I'll try uh, another website. Um, just 
I'll just Google China and because I can get more information. And there's images of the Chinese flag. And then I'll there's another There's a um, Chinese orphanage in China called um, Show Hope. I like to get information from because I'm just um, um, used to it, and so I'll copy stuff from here and then paste it into my Word document. Um, and then after I get done with that, I'll go to um, Site Machine. I usually do MLA because that's where um, how I was taught. In my English class and go to a website because that's what you're citing from mm. let's do China and just do select because that's the one that we want to cite. There it is. Then you continue the steps, that way it'll show you everything. And you can put in information. And then I'll copy that source and then um, save it. And go to another. Um, Go to another site. Mm, let's do uh, China's population. So that'll give us information on. How many people are there? I can go to let's go and copy this one. it to our page and then we can go back to site machine I use I copy the URL then go back to MLA 
paste there it is I'm going to copy this and put it into my Word document. Do a page break and create a site page. That way you don't lose your your own sites. All right. And then I'll save my work. And that's it. I'm writing a paper on the sleeping patterns of teenage students for my class in psychology. First place I would go to is primarily Google because it's easy to use. Just wait for it to load up. First thing I would type, I would type, you know, a broad statement, sleeping patterns of teenage students. You know, you see you have all these, this that pops up. Normally I would choose the first um, link because that would probably be the most clicked link. And you see National Sleep Foundation sounds, well it looks like it could be accurate information, have different types of facts and consequences of sleeping patterns and you have different pages. So first I would look, first I would read this first paragraph right here. And if I like the information, I would open up a Word document and I'll jot down some notes. After doing, after seeing this, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily close out this page. I'll just come up here and click New Tab, and once again, I'd go back to Google. Now I'll type in the same same statement sleeping patterns of teenage students now here we have a college link UCLA so I've clicked that universities tend to have accurate information here we have another introduction paragraph with the risk of sleep, not getting enough sleep, the need for sleep. Here we have a more detailed description of sleeping patterns. Here we have a bunch of different links within this website to look at there's sleepiness I'd click this to find out exactly how one gets sleepy or things like that just other information I could use in my essay and once again instead of closing out the tab I would just click new tab Go back to Google, 
and type in the same statement sleeping patterns of teenage students I'll type this in because I don't want to necessarily get off topic I want to make sure I stay on topic as I scroll down I see many different many different links I can click right here we have Stanford University once again we have another link to a college it's important to have many different sources and links to um, compare information you know you would want to find out if you know, the information you're putting in your essay is correct and accurate so that's important to have many different tabs of the same thing from different links <coughs> once again the same thing back to Google I do this many times to again have many different sources of the same information here we have a PowerPoint from the sleep foundation After looking at this PowerPoint, I would scroll down the table of contents. This is good so I'd make make research quicker. I could just look at see which one I um need to go to. We have who is most at risk for drowsy driving. Mm. Sleep smart. Just many different things. I would continue to scroll down. So this is talking about drivers, student drivers, who tend to not get enough sleep and try to drive a vehicle. This could be. This could also be some more information I could just put into into my essay to make it more interesting for the reader. Now after looking up certain patterns for sleeping, after looking up certain sleeping patterns for teenagers, teenage students, I'd once again go to back to Google. Now I'm choosing Google again because it's easy. It's easy to find information on Google with keywords and things like that. So I would look up the transition, the sleeping patterns, like the transition between high school and college for a student, and how, and what happens to their sleeping schedule. So, let's see. Um, I would search first. I would search high school, high school student sleeping patterns or habits you can choose either one and you see here we have the same link pops up sleepfoundation.org but as we scroll down we see many different things uh, many different links um, I'm gonna go with most high school students are sleep to go with this link I went with this link because again it's at the top of the page so I would assume that it's it's the more I wouldn't say it's the more accurate website to go to but I would I would assume that it's more um, it's more chosen by other people who have also searched the same same subject as me so as I as I get this, I want to 
compare a sleeping schedule between a high school student and a college student. So I'll again open up a new tab, go back to Google. And I will search the sleeping pattern for college students. And here we have a variety of things. We have we have a link from the health center. Have a link from Brown University, Notre Dame College. There's just many different things here. And typically I would go for one that has been given to us from a university, mainly because, you know, coming from a college, you would assume that the information is correct and accurate. So here we have college students are among the most sleep deprived people in the country. It just it just continues down the page as we scroll down, just in endless information about about sleeping the sleeping patterns. So now that I have all this information, I typically typically open up a Word document. I would put one half of the screen my internet browser and I'll take the word document and put it on the other half of the screen I'll do this because it makes it easier to go back and forth between your um your notes and you can just easily look over to the other half of the screen and see the information. So here I'll start off with the teenagers in sleep. I'll, I see facts and consequences so I'll just jot down a few of these facts. Now I wouldn't want to jot down word for word so I typically just briefly read over this and if I see something that that looks interesting or if I see something that might seem like it's important information I'll jot it down over here in Word so right here the first fact says sleep is vital to your well-being well that seems like something I can write as a topic so I will jot that down Then it just goes on and on. It says here teens need about 8 to 10 hours of sleep. That seems like a good fact to use. So once again I'll jot it down. And here, here it has a statistic. using a st statistic in your paper seems seems to make it more let's say um makes it more accurate I would say well it wouldn't make your paper more accurate but professors they like they would typically like statistics to be in your paper showing that you actually did research on your topic so I would jot that down Now that I've jotted down a few facts, I'll come down here to consequences from not getting enough sleep. Enter a few spaces. And now I would just take some take some of these notes of the consequences of not getting enough sleep. It says here it limits your ability to learn, listen, concentrate, and solve problems. That seems like a a really big factor of not getting enough sleep. So 
Once again, I would write it down over here. Now here we have some information that's not really you wouldn't typically put inside your essay mainly because it's not information that one would one would think of like like formal to write a paper on to put inside your paper to turn into a professor of a university or a teacher in high school make it says make you more prone to pimples now more a more um uh how would you say uh professional way to say that would be a lack of sleep can contribute to acne and other skin problems so instead of saying make you more prone to pimples i would just drop down lack of sleep can contribute to acne and other skin problems I am writing a paper on concussions for my English class. The first place I look for information is google.com because it's easier to search in the search box. I use the search terms concussion and football because it'll give me the most information about my topic. I chose this link because it gave me the most specific word choice inside of this URL I am going to save this URL because it gives me the best information about concussions. I will keep up with this information I locate by copying and pasting into a Word document. The second place I look for my information would be Google again. I chose this link because this is a newspaper article and I find it reliable.
I will save this link because it gives me specific examples about concussions in football. I'm going to change my search terms to concussion effects because I want to see the impact that it has on athletes. The next place I look for information about my research would be Galileo because I find it reliable. I chose this link because it gives me information about preventing concussions. I can use that as an argument in my paper. I will not save this link because it's not specific to my needs. I will save this link because it is an academic journal and it seems very reliable for information about concussions and evaluation. Copy and paste that to a Word document.
and I would try to look for another academic journal because they are to me the most reliable search for concussion protocols I'm going to choose this academic journal because it discusses concussions in NHL, which is hockey, other than the sport of football. I am going to save this link because it will give me a counter argument about how concussions occur in other sports besides football. Now I'll change my search to concussions and disease to determine the long term effects of concussions. I chose this academic journal because I felt it was most reliable and most credible for my research. I will save this link because it was a study done by two doctors so I find it very credible. Now I change my search 
to look for books that are found in library catalog at Joy Sutton. And I will search concussions as my title to be more specific in my searching.